See that? Conforms right there. So he's good to go. He's ready to be tightened down. And he's going to take, I believe, is an M10. So this is why we brought the M10 for it. M12 was to drain him out. So let's go back here. I'm going to put the extension so it won't cover that camera angle. That way you can see how it's crushed. Not much, really. This one, you probably don't want to do more than... Uh, since it's M10, more than likely is a M6 thread size or M8 the most. I think it's M6, so you probably don't want to do more than 7 foot pounds. There we go. It's soft. So that's enough right there to seal. And we're good. We are got our transmission guy covered. Now, before we put our engine oil, of course, we got to take care of um, the final tighten down of our uh, NCY oil cooler. So let's get that squared away before we start putting things away. And this one we can cap off. So he's good to go. We don't need him anymore. That's a, That's really how much... I'm sorry. That's really how much transmission oil you should actually take out and put back in. So it's not a lot. You know what I mean? That's why they say this whole bottle here costs you 15 so it'll last you almost a year or two, depending on how much you use it. So... 110 millimeters, just that little bottom area too, right there. See, so you can see where 110, 10, 110 millimeters. Are. So we dropped it from 900 to about 800. Keep in mind we had a few overflow of, of uh, spill back out, but that shouldn't be enough. Okay, so let's go ahead and tighten down our NCY oil cooler and get everything prepped up for uh, pretty much inputting our engine oil system here. So. We still have to get the magnet fishing out of there, so that's gonna be a mess. So let's go ahead and prepare this guy now. We're gonna to have to tighten him down at this angle. And then we're gonna rearrange everything. So let's go ahead and do that. That was fast flexing, huh? Okay, so our dipstick, I should close the back. Don't want any dirt to get into that funnel, especially. That broken chip last time we had that was a fun part okay so this, now the sun's getting cooler again for us okay so what we're gonna do is since it's an open socket now again this is our aluminum their CNC machine pressing so we don't need like something the torque is so heavy we're gonna rely on the our um, copper washer to do that for us so I'm gonna need a uh, it might take uh, maybe a 14 millimeter. Let's find out. That uh, should be a, a little bit bigger. A little bit bigger. Let me try to see if I can find the right socket or right open wrench for it. I need open wrench. Uh, let's see a 17 millimeter. Who knows? So I have a 17 millimeter open one here. And let's go for it. Lo and behold, it's the same as uh, your other uh, oil port and everything, 17 millimeter. So let's go ahead and tighten it up. Let's get things out of the way so I can actually make room for myself to do things. All right. So remember this tool again? We're going to use this to tighten that bolt area. So we did our measurements there already. Now again, we can pull this down. We don't have to get it out of the way yet. First things first, we gotta tighten this as much as we can. Okay, you don't want to over tighten this again, it's just aluminum. It's supposed to just crush the washer and you're, you're done with. So if you don't have something to support, since, since we have tie straps to support all here, I'm fine. Oh, wow. I feel like it's actually threaded and it fell loose. See, that's how soft these guys are. Look at that. Okay. There. You might want to just do it by hand a little bit. This thing actually almost felt like it just stripped off. So luckily it still has some thread here. Because without it, uh, there's nothing else to do. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and just make sure. That's it. You can see here I'm very careful with it because we're again we're just gonna rely on just crush the washer we're done all right so that one's good I do the same thing on this side I'm gonna reach over and I'm gonna test to make sure it actually has ventilation going through it 
uh, by uh, shooting air, which I'm going to use my uh, shop back again, force the air in and see if it blows out the other end of the hose. Because if it doesn't, then we have another situation. What? Let me get this guy. It seems so easier just to twist this guy right here until that gets tightened. <laughs> Alright, so the hose is what's helping me twist it over. And these are aluminum, so they're they're just as soft as your what you were you would tight the premium oil cap. But you don't want it too loose either. And you got trouble. Okay. Let's see if I can go back to this one. Maybe it just the ranch fell loose. I got scared a little bit. No, this one does feel like it's might easily strip, but it's good though. I want to get this guy to align with the shape of the. Oh yeah, it's done. All right, so that's good. I'm not gonna force anymore. And now what we're gonna do, since we got this angle just right where we want it, we can go ahead and bolt this down to where we want it. Now we we agree that we probably want to face it this way, right? So let's go and get the socket in there. Where's our little socket driver there for this one? Everything's coming along quite nicely. Try to do everything at once, you know. Try to get, when, once you get something open, you might as well take care of this, that. You know, if you're gonna have to take out the engine oil, you might as well change it. Uh, and we probably, you know, we're gonna take out our our cover of the scooter housing. You might as well look at other parts you can change out or replace, because that way you don't have to mess with it again. I'm gonna use extensions so you guys can see me uh, tighten this guy. Actually, maybe the best thing to do is clamp them. All right, now it's fine. You guys can see perfectly. There we go. It's looking great. Now I, I want to make sure I focus because I don't want to cross thread these guys. All right, so I want to put him enough where he's still showing the blue. Again, keep a little bit the rubber on the surface here. See from this angle. See, I kept it. I didn't want it. I didn't want my um. Sorry. Come on. That's what it felt like when I was recording uh, using this uh, on the scooter when I was driving. It felt like it was shaking like I was in the water like that. Uh, it's still trying to get... There you go. Took a while, didn't it? Alright, so... <laughs> Are you tidy? Hold it in place. I think I am tightening it. I'm not sure. I feel like I'm tightening it. There we go. Again, this is still aluminum tip all the way. So you want you definitely want it snug. You don't want any motor oil to be just leaking freely. But you don't want to over tighten it where so you can see that the threads are coming off. I mean the threads are exposing itself. Quite a bit of few threads here. See that? It's getting some more in there. You want to feel like it's tight because you don't want to. This this is not an area where you can actually easily reach once you put the cal covers back on. And we'll still test this openly when we get the motor oil in there to see if there's any leaks or anything before we actually put our cover on. I think it's getting there. That's looking like it's forever here, huh? Man. I was afraid of doing it this way because then you guys can't see it. So, um, let me pick up my pace. Pick up the camera. Okay.
Oh, am I loosening it? No, I am loosening it. <laughs> I was right tidy, then I decided to flip it around because. Okay, there it goes. See, I was tugging on the, the thing, so that's why I'm going to need a little bit more support for it. Yeah. Let me go ahead and set this down for a second here. You have to use both hands to hold it firmly. Else we'll have some problems with it. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to come up from an angle here where I feel I can grip this, same time support the I guess when it gets to a certain point, it won't let you twist much anymore. Oh, the sock has changed. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like it's, this thing is bulging out where it pushes the socket out, which is good. It's a good safety way. But yeah, this is definitely tight. Yeah, oil is not, should be leaking out through there. And it's crushed with the copper. See that? They use the copper. So let's go and get this guy out now. I'm dying to, uh, you know, get this guy's installed here. It'd be so awesome. It's fully complete. It's gonna take a little time to prep everything up, just like we did our ground wire and our wire work. But it's still worth it though, because we can rest assured that it's making good ground, and we can rest assured that our oil, our motor oil, you know, has a good path and everything's secured. It's better to do it the right way than questioning like, oh man, did I tighten it up or, you know. Let me get on that side. I don't want to do an awkward position because you're messing with soft aluminum and you might only get one shot at this. Oh, uh, well, unless you have an auto parts store, <laughs> you can always get some more, but. Uh, get to, that's why I like working the ground level. You can see what's going on. I'm gonna try bring this wall down a little bit because I need to make sure I'm still exposing some some of the hose. Right tidy. This one's gripping really nicely. slipping there we go that one's not going anywhere either that one's not going anywhere either yeah, we don't want to have another motor oil leak that's for sure now we have so many points of entry with motor oil leak so definitely want to avoid that as much as possible okay so now we got that there we can go ahead and tighten these guys out let's go and feed them through and see how which end they look like before we tighten these, the other ends of the banjo and the oil filter. So let's loop them around. Come with me here. All right. When you're doing things more carefully, that's why it's going to take a little bit more time. Okay. Be a good time to actually test the vacuum once we get these guys bolted on. So let me go ahead and prepare to get these guys bolted on here. Come from the other side. We haven't used our funnel yet for the oil, so we can test that still out. nice recording day. I guess you could record so much more than if you were trying to record in 4K. That was, it was a little too much space needed for 4K and it, probably you wouldn't even notice it really. Quality was almost as par as your regular standard. Unless you have a 4K TV maybe and you're zooming into a certain resolution. But for the most part, it's so much better just to get the, the phone here into a, 
a really precise angle like this and you can see. So what I'm gonna do before I tighten it down, I need to see where, when I drag it over, how it's gonna actually lay. So I don't want the cable to twist, I want to see where it naturally will come. And then I'm gonna bolt it accordingly to its position. And the bonja bolt too, especially. So this one feels like I need to twist the bonja bolt up a little bit. So you can see here the bonja bolt is facing opposite what we need it to. And again, without twisting the cable, we're letting the cable pull naturally. Without twisting the cable, twisting the cable around, the bonja bolt lands like right there. And we don't want we don't want it to well actually, you know what? I forgot their universal side. Uh, if I was to take, well, first of all, I gotta get the washer out of it soon. They're universal, so, so I can take the bonja bolt off from this side. I think it's universal. I might be wrong. Let me check. I think you can go from this way too as well. But let me let me check and learn something with you. See if they are. Oh, yeah, you can push it out really, literally. I think they are actually universal. So there's no thread in them. So you can go up like this. Let's see. Let's see if I can. All that talk and I still can't do it. Uh, it should fit in. See this little thing won't go in yet. There it goes. Now it goes in. So you want to make sure it clamps. Okay, if that's the case, then that's fine. But we, I, what I like to do is see the. It's still twisting it like this way. It's not like a perfectly up and down setup. So what I like to do instead of twisting the cable and forcing it, let's go ahead and MacGyver this. Uh, well, there it go. That was it. <laughs> How hard was that really? All that talking I just had to do in a split second. That was it, see? So now it's gonna, when it pulls, it's gonna line perfectly. It still feels like it's tilting a little bit um, toward the, toward the, you know, clockwise here. So I'm gonna tilt it this way a little bit. And you can, you know, play around with it until you get exactly how you're gonna position it. I like to make sure there's no strain on the cable being twisted. So you can see here's a straight line from the input or the output of the, I call it again, um, we call it the radiator, oil cooler, and then comes out here to the input, you know, cool oil is going input of the adapter. So you can see here straight up and down now, sort of, I can still feel like it's bent in one side, but when I actually tug on the cable, it lines itself perfectly like this without the cable being strained. And that's what I want, that's what I'm going for. Okay, so this one's ready, and how we're gonna bolt this down is we're gonna we're gonna sort of twist this guy off a little bit. So let me go ahead and unbolt him a little bit off, loosen him, I mean. Okay, so let's go and spin him around. He needs to line up perfectly the same, just a little bit exposed, right? No. Just a little bit exposed, probably maybe a millimeter. A millimeter exposed at some cable still. And this guy right here lines up right there, like right there, back to back. Okay, so we're ready to tighten this guy down. It means he's not gonna be moving anymore. I'm gonna put some pressure on the bottom so it doesn't move. And then I'm gonna get my socket here and drive it in. So we're at where, oh, look at that. See, this one wants to, not supposed to move no more. All right, there we go. Once we get in a little bit, the t oh, sorry, see my see the clear shot of all my skin, but not this. <laughs> all right, so this is it. We're gonna try to get it to. There we go. Coming back from here, try to get it not to move and position it. It's gonna put push down a little bit. Oh no, I don't want to move this guy. Uh, it's okay. Not gonna be perfect. It's just like I, I want to be upright, aesthetically pleasing. That's why. I mean, if you really didn't care too much, you could have got this done 20 minutes ago. But knowing me, so I'm gonna hold everything securely in here while I drive this guy like cracking it a nut here. Let's see this. Mm -hmm. There we go. Oh, see when you feel like a start. Loosening the thread, that's when you tie. Oh, guys, it's time to let it go. All right, so there we go. That one has a seal there. I can still twist it, though. A little concerned by that. 
I mean, this does apply pressure, but if it's strip, it's not gonna apply pressure. So let me try this again and see if this thread is actually stripping. And we have, we have four more spares, so no fear. We can afford to lose some. Mm, there you go. There you go. See, this thing should not move. If it's moving, that means this is not tight enough. Okay, so it's not moving anymore. I can't twist it freely. I mean, I'll have to try, but I can't. Okay, so there it goes. You can tighten it some more. Tighten it where you can't twist this back and forth anymore in the hose. Because if that is the case, then it's not really secure. Okay, so that one's ready to go. Now he's going to need his other bushing. So I'm going to leave him aside. Let's go and grab the other guys in. And let's get this guy prepped up, ready to go. And we still have to make one more prep inside, which I think we have already. We just got to tighten it down. Okay. So this one here, this one doesn't matter. It's a hexagon sort of, you could say. But if you really want to be like me and get everything the way you want it to. So what I'm going to do is... Now the sun is giving up on us. I think the clouds is coming over. That's what it is. Okay. So what I'm going to do is... Let's see what I'm going to do. <laughs> All right. So let me... Oh my God. Okay. I thought I had it backward. I do have it. Well, no, no. I have it right way. We went from the inside on this guy. So he's going to be facing like this if he was dragged straight. So that means this guy needs to come up a little bit like this right here. But you can't see, right? So we really want to keep it consistent. If he wants to be dragged all the way to where he needs to go. He needs to be tightening right there. And... Tighten right there is what we'll do. Now keep him there. You don't want to twist anymore where he needs to be. You can see there, he's got enough slack for himself. Let's see, get some more light here for you. I'm gonna go and hold it in place. It's like you're almost holding a nutcracker. Okay. Just hold it in place. The more tighter you get, the more it'll help you. don't have to worry about holding it too much. All right. All right. All right. Damn, this one is... Oh, hope it's not crushing the aluminum. You just want to make sure you do it tight enough, but don't want to crush the aluminum again. These things can be crushed. Okay, so you can't twist it off the hose, right? That means it's tight. You can see here almost a little bump that it's created. That's how tight it is. Almost you can count one, two, three, four, five. How many are coming out? Okay, so now we get the other end of the cap. We're almost getting ready to place our screen and everything else in there. But before we do that, uh, before we do that, I gotta find out where's the cap. There it is. There's all they are. All right, there. Okay, so this is uh, something to insert as well. And where is that guy? There he is. There he is. So these are facing. This kind of gives an idea. It's not going to go any different. And this one's going internally, right? So we're leaving it to it. If this is going internally, this cap gets screwed in. Let's see where this cap screws in first, and then we'll twist this. Let's see where this cap screws in farthest, and then we'll twist it, okay? So here we go. Unfortunately, I think we still take this bungee bolt out. I think we need to take it out anyway, because we need to, well, we don't really have to. We can use this to actually grip it and twist this in, but let's just, for simplicity reasons, let's take out this bungee bolt as well. We only needed it actually to help us drive. There we go. It's off. This thing might fall off easily, so I better be careful. Take it off now, I guess. The the copper crush washer here. Put that aside there. We got two over there. Okay. We'll take this bonjo bolt off as well. We'll put it here in our pan here so we won't lose any of our parts. Supposedly, right? So let's gotta grab these guys here, put them in there as well. Keep them all in one sort of place. Hmm, smells like someone's roasting pigeons or something. I'm not sure if you've ever had that before. 
Uh, remember I used to do that in the freeway. I don't think it was legal, but we shot pigeons and they made me pluck the feathers, you know, the big boys. And then um, and when it was fully cooked, they didn't let me eat. <laughs> so I did all the prepping work for them. They built the fire or I, I think they even let me do that. I don't know. Can't remember. Anyway, <laughs> that's my fond memories of childhood going around with my big brother. Um, you know, I felt like I was now I look back. I think I was used. <laughs> you don't know that when you're a kid, you know, you thought you're, you know, you're doing cool, but you don't realize you're being, uh, you're being the guinea pig. All right. So you can see here where it tightens up. So we're going to line this bolt the same direction as this one. So we're going to twist this guy. Seems like I have about three minutes and 22, seven seconds. So I'm going to do the best I can, but it seems like it's skipping a little bit here. So I better leave this guy alone. It's easier to fix because it's closer to us. If it does leak, we'll find out. We can change it right away. But the way this angle is, I think it's going to be okay. Yeah, it's going to be okay. It hits the bump and it closes it up right there. Okay, so I'm going to go and tighten this one too. But before I tighten it, I want to see. Yep, you want to keep it straight, right? Sorry. You want to keep it straight like this, right? So when it's feeding to that little port of it, it's the same. So we're going to go and start tightening this guy here. And then I'm going to take a vacuum and shoot the vacuum air into it. Unfortunately, I'll have to do what I can because I know this has a bonjo bolt here, so I'll probably have to close this one in and shoot the vacuum on top. So let me go and get this ties tightened as well, and we're going to set up the vacuum, and I'm going to try to shoot for it. I have about maybe, I don't know, it says 3 and tw three minutes and 27 shooting, but I think it does that every time. So I might have actually another 3 minutes, so I don't want you guys to miss on the most important part of testing out to make sure the air flows out. Okay, there we go. See, this one can tight. <sighs> see, this one? See, it's definitely not letting it in no more. You can see much more threads coming out from this one than this one. So, this one's the same. I might just want to go ahead and replace this guy. If he's stripped, then that's fine. We're going to go ahead and get him a new one. So, let me do that real quick here. I'm going to try to see if I can bolt him in more, but if I can't, we're just going to put a new one in there. Just no, no, okay. He's going in more. He's like, no, I'm not leaving yet. I'm not ready yet. You're the one that stopped on me. Oh, yeah. He's good. <laughs> yeah, he's not spinning no more. Yeah, you don't want it spinning. If you see it spinning, that means you haven't tightened this good enough. So this, they're both not spinning no more. This ain't going nowhere. Okay, so now they're both coming in here like this. Okay, and then this one also is coming in like this. And don't worry, as long as the banjo bolt is level, we can put the, the bolts on any side. So you can see here, they're both coming in level like this. As long as they're level, you can, you know, rearrange it to come up from any side right here. So you can see here, it's probably going to be using a lot of tug. I will put a little tie strap there to actually relieve the pressure uh, from the, you know, the, the both halves being tugged against each other. So we'll do that after we go and test this out right now. All right, so let's go and get the vacuum and let's turn this sucker on. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to shoot some uh, air since we don't have an air compressor. This is the best we can do here. So let me get the vacuum all geared up and ready. And we're gonna shoot some air to it. Okay, turning on the vacuum, or a blower. Okay, get through here. Yep, air's coming out. Air's coming out. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll prove it to you. See that? Air is coming out here and going through it. Yeah. <laughs> Let me show it to you. Okay, I got this guy here in the air. 